100 points. S&P down half a percent. And the Nasdaq is the loser today, down one and a quarter percent. Obviously, those semi warnings, including today's from Micron, didn't help. You've been bullish. We've come pretty far in a pretty short time period, 20 percent rally or so in the Nasdaq. Is this rally still intact in your view? Uh, Sarah, um, I think in the short term, I wouldn't be surprised if the markets pause a little bit. And that's something that our technician, Mark Newton, is calling for. But I think that there was a fundamental capitulation in June. You know, investors panicked, thought this inflation narrative was going to lead to years of pain. And I think that that capitulation is now being unwound. Uh, so we think that the bottom is not only in that you really want to be buying dips in the second half. And I think we'll be surprised at how much markets recover before year end. Why? What? Because, you know, you have changed your view. You have changed. You have actually had a lot of conviction around this bullish narrative. But most of the strategists out there, Tom, they're, they're not convinced. They say it's still this is a bear market rally and the fundamentals point to a weakening economy. We heard it from Liz Ann Saunders at the top of the hour, a weakening economy. And even if we have seen peak inflation, it's not clear that the Fed is recognizing that we're going to slow down anytime soon. Uh, I think there's still a lot to, yet to be determined. And, and that's why when people are choosing how they come out, they're coming out bearish because the bearish narrative works better when you're uncertain. But if we have a softening economy, that doesn't mean we have a recession. We could just have a soft landing. Um, markets have not only rebounded and responded pretty well to inflation, but I think a lot of leading indicators for inflation are telling us that the hard data, like the CPI prints, aren't really reflected of underlying trends. Gasoline is a great example. You know, in July, gasoline might subtract 33 basis points from CPI, but on the current trajectory, it's going to subtract almost 80 basis points. So you're, you know, into August, I think inflationary deceleration pressures are accelerating. And then from a duration, I think people think this bear market's been too short. We're going to publish a piece tonight for our clients, but when you look at the, the duration of a bear market, it's typically 21% of the length of the prior bull market. This bear market has already been uh, 146 days or 164 days. That's 25% of the prior bull. So we're already in the zone where a bear market could end. And we had that type of breadth thrust that took place. Uh, we wrote about how the percentage of stocks in bear markets was over 74%, really the fourth highest since in the last 30 years. The three other prior times it was this high, it was actually a bottom in the market. So, but what hasn't come down? Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but what about earnings? Er, what hasn't come down relative historically to some of these other bear markets, especially at peak inflation, is the earnings growth rate. Yeah, you're you're spot on. Uh, I think earnings is a risk. Um, I don't know if earnings are going to fall as much as people expect because we still have nominal inflation. Um, so, I think 250 still could be a safe number for next year. But if you look at how markets are responding to earnings, um, you know, we had some huge negative pre-announcements from the semiconductors and the stock market's off one or 2%. If this was in May or June when positioning was different, we could be down 10 or 20. So I, I just think what we're seeing on the downgrades to earnings is, is, is showing people aren't really risk on. So I, that makes this even more constructive. And again, in 82, the bear market, the entire, Volcker era bear market was erased in four months. I think that's what could happen in 2022.